He's been the number one advocate for the state's number one industry. Now Greg Ibaugh heads to Washington. Ahead on Grow, reaction as Greg Ibaugh is confirmed for a key USDA post and a look back at the legacy he leaves as state ag director. And the winds howl across the plains. We'll look at how it's impacting harvest. And some city folks are squealing about pork. It's time to grow. From Dawson County to the Trump administration, Greg Ibaugh is confirmed for a key post at the USDA. Egg Secretary Sonny Perdue applauded the Senate's confirmation of Greg Ibaugh, who was nominated to serve as Undersecretary for Marketing and Regulatory Programs at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The vote was unanimous. Ibaugh leaves a rich legacy, a dozen years as state egg director, overseeing and promoting the state's number one industry. A relatively low population in our immense agricultural uh, production output, we can't ignore the fact that external markets are important to our agricultural producers. From the moment he was named state egg director in 2005, Greg Ibaugh looked well beyond Nebraska's borders. Serving as bookends to his career, Nebraska beef was first when major markets opened and Ibaugh was there. Between the Japan uh, opening that came in about 2005 right. or so, uh, right at Christmas time, and, and the China that we'd been waiting 14 years for, those were great, uh, great events that have been kind of a highlight of being director of ag. As Mark McHarg picks corn, he's thankful for the work Ibaugh has done. I think Greg could say that uh, he put his stamp on uh, from the time here in Nebraska. Those who have traveled the world with the state egg director say his impact is immense. Comes across in really such a humble but yet um, authoritative way and so I appreciate that he's been really involved in trade. When Ibaugh started not a single county was designated livestock friendly. Now 43 are and the beef state has diversified with more pork and poultry. The culmination of all that just this last year is uh, Costco coming to Nebraska and uh, again that didn't happen by accident. Uh, Greg and the uh, department put a lot of groundwork in. Ibaugh is the longest serving egg director in state history. More than promoting the industry, he's also had to confront challenges like droughts and avian influenza. Tough decisions that had to be made but I think Nebraska went through that very well. A longtime friend and fellow Dawson County cattleman, Craig Uden is head of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. We also got his reaction on his friend being named for this USDA post. He is just an excellent candidate for this position. He's been a strong leader for Nebraska agriculture. He's very well versed in trade, leading in communicating the values and products Nebraska has to offer in a worldwide uh, <clears throat> Uh, aspect through uh, through the trips, the trade trips that he's taken around the world. So, I happened to be there when they uh, uh, were having his hearing for the Senate Ag Committee, and and he he passed with flying colors, and we just needed to get him under this confirmation. But he'll be a strong strong leader that uh, is very well versed in agriculture. Sonny Purdue reacting, quote, Greg Ibaugh will bring experience and integrity to his new role at USDA and carries with him the knowledge he's gained in the dozen years he served as Nebraska's Director of Agriculture. His expertise in a wide cross-section of agricultural issues will be invaluable to our customers, the farmers, ranchers, foresters, and producers of America, end quote. And now to our poll question, how would you rate Greg Ibaugh's performance as State Ag Director? Follow NTV's Grow on Twitter, cast your votes. As always, results are non-scientific, and we'll share them next week. Harvest got off to a slow start with the rains. Now it's been the wind posing challenges. NTV's Sydney Edwards has our story. The weather has not been kind to harvest this year. Too much rain during the wrong months, and now wind gusts posing more risks. There's only so much this crop can take. Hastings area farmer Lance Atwater tells me how this season has gone so far. We put the crop in with a challenge because spring was wet, um, cold, 
and then now we're taking out the crop and it's been wet um, and they're talking kind of a cold spell coming through and then obviously we're dealing with the winds now um, that are gusting. Wind gusts over 40 miles per hour today and are predicted the same for tomorrow. Lance says with wind like this, the main concern is the standability of the corn. The higher winds, if you have poor stock quality, can definitely break the corn stock and the, make the corn go down. And so when that happens, you can potentially use some, lose some yield. Plus, um, it makes it more challenging to harvest the crop. While the wind hasn't affected his fields too much, some farmers have seen nearly 70% of their corn fall down. You can kind of see a few plants that are kind of broke off. Or the tops are kind of starting to break. Lance also says farmers are hitting that critical point to start getting the crop harvested. The longer it sits out here, the more, the higher the chance becomes of corn starting to go down, especially if it has some stock quality issues to it. Besides toppling corn, High winds make it difficult to tarp down trucks and potential fires are always a risk. You're dealing with a lot of moving parts on machinery so things do get warm and occasionally something can get spark something and then unfortunately when you have 40 mile per hour gusts um, it can make a fire spread pretty quickly. Lance adds one thing his family does to prevent fires is making sure the machinery is greased up. And not only is it harvest it's planting season. Winter wheat is in the ground, but cover crops too aren't going in. And that's the subject of this week's poll question. We wanted to know if you're putting any cover crops in this fall, and it's a split vote. Either way, that means a lot of cover crops are going in the ground if half the growers in the area say they're planting them. From feed to genetics, kids learn about animals inside and out. Cattlemen are always thinking about the next generation, getting the calves that meet their needs on the farm and ranch. Kids saw where that starts. It was an eye opener for many who probably haven't thought much about the effort it takes to produce the animals that provide some of our favorite meals. This is really a way for kids to learn how animals work inside and out. And a lot of these kids have never had exposure to livestock. And so we really take them more in depth with, with how animals are made and, and their functions and what their uses are and, and the careers that are related to the livestock industry as well. Extension educator Rhonda Herrick also used a pineapple to illustrate the point that not everything in the animal is those cuts of steak we think about and how cattlemen value byproducts that come out of that animal as well. That event was held at Raising Nebraska in Grand Island.